Hello, hello. We are going to start the session number three for the week number three. So tomorrow we are going to have the last um, session for this week. And we are going to have just more, uh, one more week in which we are going to um, finish the course that we are having by now. So a uh, very, very short time. So now we are going to have a very interesting topic in which we are going to talk about model verb versus adverb because we are going to find some specific information that we need for this specific topic. But we are going to begin with um, a topic in which we are going to use or we are going to have the similarities the difference and all of the things about the mobile verbs and the adverbs. And also we are going to talk about the uses that we give to those uh, categories of words. And then when we have clear all the information that we have about the mobile verbs and the adverbs, we are going to uh, find the new information that, that, that we are uh, waiting for or we are looking for. So in that case, first we are going to see what is a mobile verb, what is uh, an adverb, uh, what are the similarities that they have, what are the differences. We are going to see all of that information. And then we are going to see the other part of the verb. Because in that case, we need to talk about the modal adverbs. That is a new topic that we are going to develop after this. Um, because we are going to talk about meaning in that case. But first, we are going to talk about adverbs and modal verbs. In this case, it's modal verb versus adverbs. Let me share the screen and we are going to begin. And remember that uh, we are almost ending today with number three. So it is necessary that you uh, work on the platform and complete uh, section number four because uh, the next week is the last week and you need to complete your exercises on time uh, because it's very important that you have a work team on the platform. And if you um, didn't work on the platform, you need to do it this uh, week. Uh, next week is the last, and you are not going to have enough time to complete the exercise. So we are going to see the topic. And it's model verb versus as a verb. We have information about this two topic. We have information about model verbs, we have information about adverbs, but we have information of uh, both of them in a separate way. So now we are going to see what are the similarities that they have, what are the uses that we um, give to those uh, parts, and also, we are going to say what are the differences that they have and what, uh, or why are they very important for the English process or the English acquisition process. So, we are going to um, begin with this part. And it says, what is the main difference? What is the main difference between model verbs and adverbs? And it says, the main difference between Model verbs and adverbs is their part of a speech, even though they are both used to convey mood. Model verbs are verbs that give additional information about the main verb, while adverbs are words that provide information about a verb, an adjective, an adverb, or a sentence. So the main difference that they have is they. Um, the, the parts of the, the speech, because they are different. 
And also, we know that they are used to convey mood. The model verbs are verbs. In that case, is the difference. Model verbs are verbs that give additional information about the main verb. In that case, it's like, we can say it is like a second verb or auxiliary, but in that case, it's also a verb. Um, adverbs are words. In that case, there are not verbs. There are words that provide information about the verb, the adjective, the adverb, or a sentence. La eh, parte más importante o la diferencia más grande que tiene el modal verb y el adverb es que el modal verb es un verbo que nos da información adicional acerca del verbo original, o sea, de nuestro main verb. Y el adverb no es un verbo, sino que es una palabra que nos da más información acerca de quién, del verbo, del adjetivo, de otro adverbio y de una oración. So in that case, that is the main difference that they have. So we are going to write the information here because it's necessary that you have this information or this knowledge of about the model verb in the address. So in that case, this is the main thing about the model verb in the, ad, the adverb because they are conveying mood, but they are doing it in a different way. And here we have the difference. Mobile birds are birds. They are part of the group. While adverbs are words, that provide information So here we have the adverb. So in that case, we are marking the important part because they are saying that the difference is the part of a speech that they are into. And uh, the main thing is that they both convey mood by mobile verbs are verbs that give additional information about the main verb and adverbs are words that provide information about a verb, negative, and adverb or a sentence. That is the main difference that they have. So now, 
we are going to see a little information about the model verbs and the adverbs and something that we need to know about them. So we have first model verbs. And it says that model verbs are also known as models and model auxiliary verbs are verbs that are used to provide additional information about the main verb. That is the thing that we read before. They are known as a type of auxiliary verb. They are nine models in the English language. So we know that they are like giving additional information about the main verb. So in that case, they are function as the auxiliary verb. And it says that we have nine models in English language. So we are going to just write the new information and not, not the old information that we have in the first part. So they are known as the type auxiliary. So we have nine model verbs in English. Let's see what are the nine model verbs. We have standing tall, and they are two, not just one, two. Then another two, shall and shall. We have four. Then we have wheel and wool. May and my. And the last one is ma. So in that case, we have nine. Can and call, shall and true, will and will, may and might, and ma. And we are going to see some examples of these models in action. So it's better to understand when we have different. Um, examples of how to use those models. So we're going to see the example. And we have here, I must apologize for my behavior. I must apologize for my behavior. Then we have, I might have been too harsh. And it says that the uh, models are used for communicative uh, purpose. In this case, it's to communicate something. So in that case, that is the main purpose for the model, to communicate something. So in this case, it says models are used Perfect. And we have the first one, and it says to talk about possibilities. Probabilities of 
And we have the example, and it says, I go stay at my uncle's house. Then we have number two, and it says to ask for advice, permission, etc. And we have the example. Can I use your phone to call my mother? Number three, to talk about habits. Here we have the example. He will go for a walk now and then. In that case, we have these, um, these purposes, and we have three. We have the first one, and that is to talk about possibilities or probabilities. I could stay at my uncle's house. In that case, is a possibility or is a probability because we don't know if that action is going to happen or it's just like we are going to say something like that. Then in the number two, to ask for advice or for permission. And it says, can I use your phone to your phone to call my mother? In that case, is asking for permission to use the, um, the phone, the cell phone. And the, the number three is to talk about habits. And in that case, he's saying he will go for a walk now and then. Ya nos decía que eh, los modos se usan para temas comunicativos o para eh, comunicar algo. Y ya teníamos la primera, que era hablar acerca de posibilidades o probabilidades. Y tenemos nuestro ejemplo de que se va a quedar en la casa de su tío. En ese caso es una posibilidad de que se quede ahí, pero también es una probabilidad de quedarse dependiendo de las acciones que lleven hasta ese punto. Luego dice que vamos a pedir un consejo o permiso de algo. En este caso, el ejemplo, can I use your phone, es eh, preguntar o pedir permiso para utilizar el celular de alguien para llamar a mamá. Y el último es para hablar de los hábitos que tienen las personas. Y ahí dice que él va, ¿verdad?, a tomar o hace sus caminatas antes y ahora. So in that case, we are communicating something. Now, we are going to see what are the adverbs and what information can we get about that topic. And it says that the adverbs are words that can modify a verb, an adjective, another adverb, or a full sentence. That is information that we already know about the adverb. And then it says, adverbs modify verbs to show how an action happens. That is something new. Adverbs modify verbs to show how an action happens. Entonces, el adverbio va a modificar a un verbo para mostrar ¿Cómo sucedió una acción?
And we have the example. My dog barks loudly. My dog barks loudly. In that case, we are modifying the verb because we are saying that the dog, the dog is doing an action, but in a noisy way. En este caso, estamos hablando de que nuestro perro ladra muy fuerte o muy ruidosamente. En este caso, estamos modificando el verbo que tenemos ahí, que es bar. I mean bar, because in this case, it's singular. Then we have the second one, and it says, my dog is quite loud. So we are going to mark here that we are modifying the verb. And in the second one, my dog is quite loud. Uh, we are modifying an adjective because loud in that case is an adjective to add intensity to the adjective. Estamos agregando eh, intensidad al adjetivo que estamos modificando. Mi, mi perro es un poco ruidoso. Then we have another one and it says, my dog barks rather too loudly. And in this case, we're saying that we are modifying more than one Adverb. And then we have number four, and it says, Unfortunately, my dog barks loudly. And in this case, it says that we are modifying an entire sentence to describe the general feeling of the sentence. So there we have the example of the adverbs modifying verbs, um, in which we need to know how an action happens. 
So now we are talk, we are going to talk about the similarities that we have about the a model verse and the adverse. We see the difference in which is saying that um, the main difference is that they are a different part of the speech. They have like different specifications uh, because one of them is a verb and the other is just a word. So now we are going to see what are the similarities that they have um, depending on the use that we um, give to one of these a specific uh, group of words. So if saying that we are going to see a list uh, to know what are the uses that we can give to these words, and it says, as we can see on the list, adverbs express different concepts. We also have the same function with model verbs. Both are used to talk about moods. That is why some learners may be confused about when to use them. And we are going to see what are the uses of, of this one. So in that case, we can say that they have almost the same, the same function. Um, because they are talking about mood. The difference is the kind of words that they are, but they are doing the same action. So in that case, they are very, very um, similar. Así que las eh, similitudes, ¿verdad? De estos dos grupos de palabras es que ambos hablan del mood, del modo. Simplemente que ambos son eh, diferentes categorías, pero básicamente se pueden utilizar eh, para describir ciertas cosas. Eh, así que por eso pueden llegar a ser bastante conflictivos a la hora de hacer nuestras oraciones, porque no podemos eh, confundir eh, o no sabemos exactamente cuándo utilizar cada uno de estos grupos. So now we are going to see. And it says that, eh, what are the words or the message that we are going to say with uh, adverbs and model verbs? And here we have the list of uh, how to say in, in the information, our desired messages. So in that case, we in both in, in models and in adverbs, we talk about possibilities. We talk about predictions. We talk about assumptions. We talk about willingness, necessity, and habit. So we are going to see uh, what are uh, one of these or uh, all of the words that we have in the list, what are the uses that we can give in that category. So we are going to see the first category that is possibility.
So in the case of possibility, it says we can use adverbs like possibly, likely, hopefully, and models such as can, could, may, and might to discuss something we are unsure about. And we are going to see some examples. So in that case, when we are talking about possibilities, we are going to use a specific word to um, discuss something that we are not very, very secure about that topic. Así que en esta parte vamos a utilizar eh, adver adverbs y models que nos permitan discutir algo de lo que no estamos tan seguros o de lo que no, en realidad no estamos seguros para nada. And we have here the example. I might go out. I am possibly going out. Then we have the second type that is talking about predictions. And it says, uh, when we want to make any prediction, we can use models such as will and would and adverbs like soon. In este caso, cuando queremos hacer predicciones sobre alguna cosa, podemos utilizar los models such and will, uh, will and would, y como adverbs podemos utilizar soon. So we have the example. And it says something bad will happen. Something bad will happen. So in this case, we are not like very secure that something is going to happen. 
but we can make predictions about the situation or because we are um, seeing some details or some proof about that uh, something is going to happen. So in that case, we are going to use wheel because it's something that is not like um, very secure that is going to happen. So in that case, it's a prediction or something. And then it says something about soon happening. Then we have talking about assumptions that is the number three. Then this one then we also use models like sure and address such as seemingly and presumably um, to talk about a declaration without firm proof. In este caso, en este caso estamos hablando verdad de asunciones. Nosotros creemos algo y eh, más que todo estamos hablando de una declaración sin una firma que sea una prueba de que esto haya pasado. En este caso solo estamos especulando. And we are going to see the example. See, uh, it, it says she should be married. And she is. In this case, we are just um, having like an idea, but we don't have proof about that action. So in that case, we are just talking about that maybe uh, that person is married, but we don't have like a very strong um, proof that something like that happened in some time in the past or even in a depression, or maybe we don't know when. Then we have the other one that is talking about willingness. And it says, 
models such as will and would and adverbs like willingly and voluntarily to show willingness and unwillingness for something. So in the cases like we are talking about if I like or I want to do something, if if I am like going to do something, or uh, I don't want to help doing something. So the case is like saying that we are like um, wanting to do something for someone. So in that case, if we are going to use will and will in other words. And we have the example. And it says, I will help you with your work. I will help you with your work. And then I voluntarily help you with your work. So in this case, uh, estamos hablando de eh, tener como la, la voluntad de, de hacer algo o de ayudar con algo. So in that case, it's like we want to do something. And in the first example, it said, I will help you with your work. Te voy a ayudar con tu trabajo. So in that case, I am like saying that I will help. I'm going to do that for you. And in the second one is talking about that I decide to help you with your work. So in that case, it is just my decision, not the decision of someone else. Así que como en este caso nos estamos mostrando eh, que queremos ayudar, vamos a utilizar ese tipo de oraciones. En la primera es como te voy a ayudar, es, es como una idea. No es como algo que en realidad ya pasó. Solo es una idea de que yo voy a ayudar. En el tercero one, yo voluntariamente te ayudé con tu trabajo. Nadie me obligó, sino que yo quise hacerlo. So we are going to uh, talk about the last two parts. That is uh, talking about necessities. And talking about habits, and we're going to end with that part. And then we are going to see the difference uh, that they have. And the other is the position of the adverb and the position of the mobile verb in the sentence. But, but in that case, we are going to end the topic tomorrow because we're just going to uh, talk about the, the two parts that are left. And it's almost time. So we are going to talk about the next one. And in this one, it says that we also use both 
models such as a mouse and show and adverbs like urgently and necessarily to discuss a things that need to be done. In this case, we are going to talk about things that need to be done. And we have the example. And it says the action necessarily involves risk. risk. The action must involve risk. So in this one, we're talking about uh, that uh, something uh, is needs to be done. In this case, it's para discutir las cosas que tienen que ser hechas. En el ejemplo, pues estamos viendo de que las acciones que vamos a tomar tienen o involucran riesgo, pero básicamente tienen que ser hechos. Así que no lo vamos a discutir cómo hacerlo, pero siempre va a tener que hacerse. And the last one of these is to, um, or talking about habits. And it says that habits are actions that are done routinely, and we can use models like will and wheel and adverbs such as usually, and so on. So talk about these habits.
Ok, en this uh, last one, eh, en este último tenemos que vamos a hablar de los hábitos y que se lleva una rutina, ¿verdad? Que se hace todos los días y vamos a utilizar los, uh, los modos, los adverbs que nos están ahí como ejemplo para hablar de estos hábitos que realizamos todos los días. So, we have, I will go for a walk every day and I always go, go for a walk. Es como decir, tengo que tomar eh, o tengo que caminar todos los días y decir, siempre voy por, uh, a tener una caminata o siempre voy para una caminata o something like that. So in that case, we are talking about uh, the similarities of the, um, the models and the adverbs. And in that case, uh, you see that we have um, different categories of uh, similarities that we have about it both of them. Uh, we are using different words, but at the end, they are having like the same meaning, uh, but we are using adverb or models to express that thing. So in this case, we have completed the similarities for that topic. It's kind of heavy, it's kind of long, it's kind of boring, but We need to talk about these kind of topics because they are explaining um, the things that we need to know about the, the model words and also the adverbs and how to use those words um, to create a sentence, to talk about a specific information and to talk about different actions. So in that case, um, We need to talk about this kind of long and heavy uh, topic. It's necessary to have a, a lot of information because we are learning about the English language. So we need this kind of information to complete the information that we have about this topic. So because um, you have information about model verbs and also you have information about adverbs. But in this case, we are making like a comparison uh, about the things um, that we know about this information. Teacher, I have a question. Tell me. Uh, uh, what is the difference uh, between habits and hobbies? Habits and? Habits. Habits and habits. Yeah. But in that case, it's the same uh, form when you are writing. Because uh, in that case, it's the pronunciation. Habits and habits. In the sentence, for example, Mm -hmm. um, I think you are yeah. that the example. What are the difference in the example that we have for habit? Yes. Ah, okay. In that case, in one of these, it's almost the same uh, meaning. But the difference is in one of these, you are using the model verb. I will, I will go for a walk. In that case, you are saying that you need to do it. Es como decir que necesitas hacerlo. I will go for a walk every day. Voy a ir eh, a caminar todos los días. Y en la otra, I always will go for a walk is something that you are already doing. Es algo que ya estás haciendo. Siempre voy eh, a caminar. En el otro es como decir que lo vamos a hacer todos los días y el otro es ya lo hago todos los días. Okay. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. So in that case, it's just the use of the mobile verse or the use of the 
of the adverbs, but in that case, we are referring to the same thing. Um, it's not like we are going to have a, a very, very different uh, idea about the sentences that we are uh, using in this part. We are just um, saying the same words, but in a different um, use of a, a structure. But at the end, are the same. So in that case, it's just the use of the models or the use of the adverbs. But we are at the end talking about the same action that we are going to perform. So in that case, it's not like. It's a, tell me. Uh, sorry, the difference between both is the first one is like a future habit, and the second one is a actually habit. Yes, it will be because you are using wool. So in that case, it's maybe maybe you did something like that maybe you do go for a walk uh, two or three times a week and you are going to change that for everyday walk but in the second one you did every day so in that case i always go for a walk is talking about every day and in the first one you are going to change your habit to do it every Day. So in that case, it's something that you are going to do. And in the second one, it's something that you already uh, do because you are doing it every day. So in that case, it's just changing uh, something in the sentences. But at the end, you are doing that action. Not in the same way, but we are going to perform it. So. In that case, is just to uh, use those uh, sentences because we have a lot of examples in here in which we are using the same uh, meaning. We can say it, the same meaning. Because if you can see in this one, when you are talking about necessities, you are saying that uh, the actions have some risk, but you are using different words. Las acciones necesariamente eh, envuelven riesgo y en el otro las acciones deben de envolver riesgo. It's uh, talking about the same action but with different words and it's like giving a different connotation or something like that, but the message is the same. El mensaje siempre va a ser igual cuando estamos hablando de esas eh, similitudes pero lo vamos a escribir de una manera diferente, pero siempre vamos a llegar a la misma conclusión, igual que en este. Podemos decir que uno es el inicio y el otro es el final. I will help you with your work. Te voy a ayudar con tu trabajo. Y en el segundo es como yo voluntariamente te ayudé con tu trabajo después de haber ayudado. Pero llegamos a lo mismo. Lo hice porque quise. ¿Verdad? De message of the uh, sentence. Pero siempre llegamos a la misma conclusión. Quise hacerlo, estaba dispuesto a hacerlo y lo hice. So, it's um, talking about the same message, but using different words or different structures. Because we are in one, we are using the uh, model verbs, and in the other, we are using the adverbs. That are giving more information about the verb, the verb, the adjective, or another adverb, or the whole sentence. So, we have here just the similarities, and tomorrow we are going to talk about the difference and more information that I have for this topic. So, we are going to end the session here, and we are going to continue tomorrow in the last session for this week. So, have a really Good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night.